to intrude. I'll go. Stay as long as you like. No, I, I don't belong. Are you sure I can't help you? Father, I'm not a member of this parish. Could I... Would it be all right if I made a contribution? You'd be most welcome. Thank you. Chops for three people. Hey, look, one... you're in the supermarket. Go on with what you were doing. Okay. Um. One. You left off at 12,970. Oh, uh, 70. 80, 90, 13,094 dollars. Dollars? That's what it looks like. Say we take off 10000 off the top for the poor fund. That leaves a, a mimeo machine, a new floor for the sacristy, black top for the playground. You stole. Why not? We're rich. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Why would anybody leave the church $13,094? Uh, uh, he, he didn't have any more loose change. Is something wrong? I don't know. Okay, Father, you concentrate on what's wrong, and I'll concentrate on making a few things right. That much money may make nothing right. Doorbell that puts visitors in a better humor. It sure does. <laughs> if you're a collector for some charity, that's handled by my office. Tax reasons, you know. No. May I come in? Sure, sure, come in. You're not hustling cumbers, are you, Father? <laughs> I don't know which of you went for the church. Wanting me or getting me? <laughs> <laughs> come in, Father. Come in. Well, it's not exactly a monk's hell, but then I've never been called a monk. Well, if every man were a monk, we'd all be in trouble. Hey, <laughs> that's good thinking. If there were no sinners, the saints would be out of business. Right? Right. What can I do for you, Father? You can tell me about $13,000. Why? Because it's somewhat larger than our average donation. You were given 13000 and $94. How did you find me? Your license plate. The police gave me your name and address. You must have thought it was Christmas finding all that loot in your collection basket, huh? Well, I had a number of thoughts. Would you mind telling me why you gave me that much money? Oh, uh, I tied one on. I, uh, I had one too many. And after that, well, you know, Gooseville. <laughs> you seem drunk. Yeah, that's what they all tell me when I get smashed. Look, I appreciate you bringing me back that money. You did bring it back. 
the broader. Noon, Arnie, and you're practically wide awake. I just solved my whole surgeon problem. Well? The morning after feeling. I just don't go to bed. <laughs> I'll uh, take that money now, Father. When I try one out, I get over generous. When did you start to drink, Arnie? I only tell you about my good points. Now. I wasn't sure you had any. Aren't you afraid, Father, for your reputation associating with somebody like Arnie? <laughs> it's an occupational hazard. <laughs> you think we've met. Your face is familiar. To most of the world. I'm sort of everybody's fuzzy memory. Marion Hart. The Marion Hart. This is Father, uh... Cavanaugh. I should have remembered Miss Hart. Half a dozen movies a lot of years ago. The studio called it a meteoric rise. They never found the right word for the fall. <laughs> You're being very modest, darling. You had lots of talent. Yeah, but not as an actor. <laughs> I enjoyed your movies. Mr. Bates? Oh, Father! You should have called. I could have picked up... Here. Buy your church a couple of candles. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks? I guess you could call it a reverse miracle. Turning thirteen thousand into twenty bucks. Why would one man seem like two totally different people? Well, if you were to settle for the first one, I could be calling workmen to fix the sacristy floor. And the blacktop and Takichi stove. I know the list. Father! They sent you. Who? They didn't. Everything is going to be all right. Now, to tell me about it. Swear. Swear they didn't send you. Swear you're not waiting for them. I swear. They're going to kill me, Father. They're going to kill me. Look, sit down. Sit down. There's one thing you can't do for me, Father. You've got to help me. You've got to help me. All right, tell me. Keep it. It'll be here when you want it. No! I don't want it. It's yours. You understand? I don't want it. It's yours. All right, don't worry. Promise. You've got to promise me. It's for you. Promise they won't get it. All right, if that's what you want, I promise. <laughs> Thank you, Father. All right, come on, come no. on. No, don't touch me. All right. I promise you'll keep the money. A priest can't break his promise. God help me.
is Mr. Miller in? Whom shall I say is calling? Father Cavanaugh. And what is your business? Religion, I suppose. A Father Cavanaugh to see Mr. Miller about religion? Mr. Miller will be right with you. Please have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. I will do so. Mr. Miller will see you now. Go to the top of the stairs. The third door on the left, not counting the closets. The third door on the left, but don't count the closets. Excuse me. Excuse me. You want to know what's wrong with it? The way you say it. All of a sudden, you're on some male chauvinist trip. I beg your pardon? Oh, uh, hello. Shoes. Thank you. Which way is Mr. Miller's office? Down the hall, Mac. Doing a book about free. You just look so sexy. Wonderful. Now, Bates wants to promise to give me more money, a bigger piece of the action, and total authority. Total! Don't you make the same mistake. Don't! My cat! Come in, please. Well, the police told me that Arnold was shot while visiting a priest. That's you, I assume. What can I do for you, Father? Mr. Bates made a donation to our church. Arnold was not a religious man. He could have acted on a whim. Mr. Bates gave me more than $13,000. Is that a fact? Coffee, Father? No, thank you. Did his whims ever run that large before? Arnold was free with his money, but uh, rarely in sums over $50 or $100. Sit down. Mr. Miller very important that I find out the reason for that loan. I should think that the police would turn up any pertinent information. Police are looking for a killer. I'm looking for the motives of the man who was killed. Arnold giving money to a church in any amount. Well, it's not characteristic of it. And $13,000. $13,094. That is strange. He had no money problem. He was a partner in quite a profitable business. The police say he was unmarried, and they knew of no close relatives. Arnold was over 21. Now, if he was fool enough to give away that much money... You know, Father, if I were you, and someone gave me thousands of dollars, why, well, I'd just put it in my pocket and not ask any questions. Congratulations on your good fortune, Father. Tell that lousy Fink Miller, if he doesn't let me in, I'm going to tear this place apart piece by piece, and then I'm going to tear him apart. Oh, Mr. Miller hasn't been in all day, sir, and isn't expected for the rest of the week. Hi, Father. Hi. Hello, Father. Hi. You lie to me, baby, and I'm going to stuff that phone right in your mouth. Will that be all, sir? Yeah, yeah. That's all. Spaghetti? Invented in the Orient. Old family recipe. And meatballs? Better than egg rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Why St. Aloysius? Why such an odd amount? I was taught to believe in manna from heaven. And new stoves. 
The strength of your beliefs is a constant source of joy and support. I deposited the money in the building fund account, temporarily, of course. The account now has $13,152. I'm ignoring the odd 27 cents. Couldn't you wait a while? A week, maybe. Yeah, a week. Then if nobody asks for the money. Father. Father. Oh, don't get up on account of me. It's bad for digestion. That's all right. Come in. Thank you. We were going to be married. Arnie. Mr. Bates? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sorry. I'm Candy Mill. How do you do? Hello. Uh, this is Valerie. Hello. This is Kenji. Hello. Oh, Kenji. Hello. <laughs> he was a wonderful man. Kind. Generous. I'm sure. He wanted me to have the nicest trousseau a girl ever had. I didn't care anything about clothes, but to please him. Yes? He was going to the bank to get the money for me. Today. Do you know what a trousseau costs? Thirteen thousand dollars. Mr. Bates donated thirteen thousand dollars to this church yesterday. He couldn't! Oh, no. No, I take that back. It's okay. The money isn't important. If he wanted you to have my money, okay. Of course, some people might think it should have been mine, but who am I to say? Good point. I know you wouldn't keep my money, Father, if you knew Arnie wanted me to have it. Is there any way that you can prove Mr. Bates' intentions? Well, everybody knew we were going together. Only last week he was with me when I was trying on mink coats. Now, why else would a man go out pricing mink coats for a young lady? I can think of one answer to that. Valerie, please. I wasn't going to say it out loud. I was going to whisper it in her ear. A lot of doubts have popped up concerning that money. Well, you don't think I'd lie. What do you know? The second one. Second what? The second question I can think of an answer for. I'm trying to find out what I can about Mr. Bates' last wishes. If you could come back next week, I might know a bit more. Oh, thank you, Father. If you have any doubts about her, just ask me. She might have been telling the truth. And break the habit of a lifetime? Could she have killed Bates? Now, you're not being charitable, Valerie. Okay, how did she know he gave the money to you? I would guess she has contacts at Bates and Miller. I spoke of the money there. Office gossip is the only thing known to rival the speed of light. Where's lady? What lady? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Hart's getting dressed. Who is it, Susie? Father Kavanaugh. Hi. Come on in here. I'm practically decent. Well, I can't figure this house out. Susie? Oh, Father, you mind zipping? No. Thank you. Same girl, different hair. At my age, Father, the only thing worse than a strong light is weak makeup. Do you know Candy Mill? Casually. Oh, not as well as half the adult male population of San Diego knows her. Was she engaged to Arnold Bates? Arnie? Not a chance. He didn't have a sweet tooth. Did you tell me about him? He was a no good bum, but I liked him. Now, still okay, huh? Considering the mileage. Arnie gave me my first job because of my figure. Illustrations for one of his books? 
Oh, that was 20 years ago. I don't think Arnie had even read a book, let alone publish one. No, I met him through Stan Miller. He was the grocery clerk in the corner store. Neither one of them had change for a dime, but somehow or other, they scraped enough money together to make a motion picture. And I was the star. Hey, you want a drink, Father? Mm, no, thanks. The picture was called A Night in the Maid's Room. <laughs> it was never shown. The cops grabbed the film. Arnie and Stan went to jail. And people were more uptight about sex in those days. Did that picture have cost thirteen thousand dollars? Ugh, bourbon. No, thirteen hundred would be closer. It was not a spectacular with a cast of thousands. There were two of us in one set, a bedroom. <laughs> you know, Father, when guys used to pick me up for a date, they were always early. Now they're usually late. Do you think they're trying to tell me something? The smart ones should be lined up outside hours ahead of time. I remember when you won that. Father, what's the name of your church? If I ever get religion... St. Aloysius, and I'd be glad to see you there. Well, don't hold your breath, but it could happen. Here's to sin, Father. What would either one of us be without it? Was Arnold Bates connected with any of your later films? No, I wore clothes in those movies. I hadn't seen Arnie for years. I was on top of the Hollywood heap, and then one day he showed up. <laughs> oh... He had held out one print of my first starring epic. How my studio would have loved that. Blackmail. That's what I thought. No. No, he made me a present of the print, and I burned it. Like a jerk. Like a jerk! It could have played the X movie houses today and made a jillion. Do me a favor. That's my guy. Don't mention the pick I made with Arnie. Every time Pete hears it, he blows his stack. Of course. I'll be going. Okay. Thank you. Doorbell! I really wish I could have helped. You know, I really enjoy talking to you, Father. I may see you at St. Aloysius one day. Hello, Susie. Well, he's not staying for dinner now. There's my beautiful movie star. Oh, you're lying and I love it. <laughs> now I ask you, Father, isn't she as beautiful as ever? The unchanging Marion Hart. I'd say so. Pete, do you know Father Kavanaugh? Nice to meet you. I recognize Mr. Scott from his pictures in the paper. Yeah, I've been in a lot. Almost as much as Snoopy. That's good. I'm counting on it for voter recognition. Pete has decided to become a politician. With his money, I think he's nuts. There are more important and challenging projects than money. Oh. Like the governor's mansion? Yeah, that'll do for a start. President Scott has a nice ring to it. <laughs> well, I've got to be going. Nice meeting you, Mr. Scott. Oh, won't you stay for a drink? No. Again, I... I'm sorry I couldn't have helped. I look forward to seeing you again. Ciao, Father. Bye. Ciao. What was that all about? It's a long story. Can you give me one good reason why I should discuss my private financial affairs with you? Have you something to hide? I answered every question the police asked, and none concerned money. They're investigating a murder. But what are you investigating, Father, and by what authority? No crime and with no legal authority. Good night, Father. Opening a publishing company costs a lot more money than making a cheap movie. I'm sure... It's the wind. Sit down. All right, all right. Sit down. 
Now stay there. Yeah. Yes. Who is he? I never saw him before. Well, I have in your receptionist's office. Oh, hi, Father. I don't know who he is. Police emergency. I suppose you don't even know who... No, no, Now my... stay there. Don't even remember my wife, Sandy LeClaire. I want to yeah, report a felonious assault Sandy on Leclerc. Stanley Miller, my 608 wife. Canyon. I don't know any Sandy LeClaire. Sandy LeClaire, breaking and entering. The suspect is being held here. I don't know his... That was her professional name. All right, thank you. Page 37, Love for the Pragmatist. The book you just put out with her picture in it. All right, stay there. Calm down. What about it? Well, Sandy and me, it's been great between us. Been married about a year. Kind of tough making the bread, but hustle here and hustle there. Anyhow, she gets a phone call from his outfit. Come right over and get your picture took. I have nothing to do with the creative decisions. My job is finance. He's lying! All right, stay there. Stay there. So, she's got herself a job. Bread's coming in crazy. Now they tell her she has to model with no clothes on. No clothes on. In the nude. You know what that means, Father? I know what nude means. It ought to mean a two-page centerfold. But these lousy creeps gave her a tiny two-inch picture with 12 other broads. You could hardly see her. Now I ask you, Father, is that nice? Huh? I bet you can't even pick her out, Father. Picture's in my pocket. When they get here, the police will want to talk to him about the Bates murder. Will you excuse me, Father? I think I'm going to be sick. Lousy two inches. Is here. Oh, poor Stanley. He's all worried. What's the matter, sweetie? You having a, an attack of nerves? Arnie wasn't killed by nerves. And if anything happens to you, it won't be nerves. It'll be because you've got a big mouth. Mother... Art? Hi, Barney. I'll be over in the rectory. What's a good word? That rockhead that you wrapped up at Miller's house, he was in a weightlifting competition. The time Bates was killed. Yeah, I was sure he didn't shoot Bates. Bates and his partner, they did time for making a dirty movie. Yeah, I know. Nowadays, they'd probably get an Academy Award. Oh, uh, I asked for a computer printout on any uh, past unsolved crimes involving $13,094 or any multiples. Nothing. I feel sure that Bates gave me that money because of a guilty conscience. Giving dirty money to a church to clean a conscience, that's a standard procedure. Would you like to explain that to the bishop? One question keeps bothering me. How could two ex-cons, Bates and Miller, both of them flat broke, raise enough money to start a publishing business? A lot from selling Girl Scout cookies. That's one of the reasons that Miller wouldn't answer your question. But what's another one? He didn't want to implicate himself in Bates' death. I don't know, Barney. Well, it's got to be. Who had a better motive for killing Bates? Now, this way, Miller winds up with the whole publishing firm just when it's making a bundle. I don't know. Somebody else might have had a good reason for wanting Bates killed. You don't want to get dripped down. Could you move it a little to the left? 
Hang on. Okay. Are you doing this for my benefit? Heaven forbid. But it certainly does dramatize the urgent need for some ready cash, doesn't it? Well, that cash isn't ready yet, so keep up the good work. I'll keep my end up. Just keep my end up. Come on in, Barney. Look, Sarge, the way I see it, nobody else could have profited from his death. But see if you can find any holes in this. Now, Bates takes too much cortisone and has a reaction. His conscience takes over and he lays that donation on you. Miller heard, he was afraid that Bates might tell where the money was, so he killed him. Well, it adds up, Barney. But six other stories might add up if you had more facts. Oh, I think I'll get the facts all right, don't worry. I'll send Stanley Miller to San Quentin. It was already on the stove. The old stove. What was that all about? He's just practicing with Valerie's needle. It's not important. You know, when you were on the force, you used to be able to smell a killer. You're losing your touch, Sarge. Smelling killers is not one of the major requirements of my present job. Did you ever check with the L.A. police to see if they had a print of that film? Yeah, they're checking. You give me a couple of days, I'll know more about Stanley Miller than he knows about himself. San Aloysius? Yes, he's here. Hold on. Barney, for you. Barrack speaking. I'll be right down. Miller. I just found him shot to death. Tea, hot, sugar and lemon for two. Yes, that's one plus one. Did you know about Bates' donation to our church? Oh, yes, indeed. A lovely gesture. They were both such warm and generous men. It's hard to believe they're really gone. I need to know why he made that donation. Tea. Hot. Sugar. And lemon. For two. That's one plus one. Put it down. Will that be all, sir? Get out. Thank you, sir. Was that the same receptionist? Yes. Unfortunately, dear Arnie put her under a long-term contract. Tea, Father? Uh, no, thanks. About that donation, the police feel that somehow it's related to the murders. Do they really? I always thought that I was the number one suspect. Well, you seem to have done very well. Better than that. I had it all. How much did this publishing house cost Bates and Miller? Oh, a mere $25,000. And that was for four bare walls, which have been replaced, a name, which has been changed, and a second-hand press, which I may have bronzed. The rest, I did. This place did not exactly fall into my lap, Father. I earned it. That $25,000 investment, where did they get it? I have no idea. They had only one friend at the time who was rolling in money. Ah, yes, 
Bernhardt de Boudoir. Miss Hart isn't seeing anybody. You tell her it was very important? I'm sorry. This is for her own safety. She could be in serious danger. Go away! Don't you know it's bad luck to see a priest the morning after a full moon? You could have a lot worse luck if you don't talk to me. Go away! Oh, you're just winging. Why didn't you want to see me? I've never heard that superstition about seeing priests after a full moon. <laughs> How could you? I just made it up. Why? At this hour of the morning, I would pass on a visit from the Archangel Michael. Susie, where's my coffee and alfalfa? Coming! Bates and Miller were killed to keep them from talking kind of a drastic method, but effective. They scrounged $25,000 to buy that publishing firm. Now, whoever gave them that kind of money didn't think it was to establish a new branch of the YMCA. Rush, rush, rush. Peace in your company. Pure Trade. straw, only not as tasty. Yeah. 12 yeah. calories. Yeah. Ideas never Blackmail is one fast way to make big money. Now maybe, just maybe, connected with that film that you made for them. I told you I didn't pay blackmail. If you have any information about that film or about Bates and Miller, the killer wouldn't stop at making you number three on their list. Look! Arnie and Stan are dead. I don't know anything about them or the picture. Do you understand? Now, I didn't care anything about that picture, but now that I'm going to be married, now that I'm going to be married, I have to think about my husband. I am going to be Mrs. Peter Scott. How about that? Me, Mary Hockenweiler. That's my real name. I could end up Mrs. Governor, Mrs. Senator, even Mrs. President. I'm sure we could do a lot worse. So, you can understand why I have to forget that that movie was ever made. Of course. Do you dig what the voters would do? Do you dig what they would do if they ever found out that Peter Scott's wife romped through a skin flick? Fade out, the end. Please go now. I am expecting my fiancé. I appreciate your coming, Mr. Scott. Well, I got your message. This isn't exactly the sort of place I'd normally expect to meet a priest. I was hoping you could help me. If I can. Your wife-to-be is the leading suspect in the murders of Mr. Bates and Mr. Miller. Marion? Why, oh, she hasn't played a lead in years. No, but it's possible a print of the first film that Miss Hart made, the one that the police supposedly destroyed, has been found here. I thought you'd want to know. Very considerate. Thank you. It's not exactly what I'd call a campaign film. Well, I don't see how that makes Marion a murder suspect. Well, Miss Hart told me that Bates gave her what was supposed to be the last print of that film. I wouldn't know about that. And frankly, for her sake, I'd just soon forget it. Neither Bates nor Miller were charitable men, rest their soul. Do you suppose instead of giving it away, they might have used it for blackmail? No way. Marion never kept that film. That's what you want to call it, a secret. Somebody might have paid $25,000 for that film, plus the cost of producing it. And half of that is exactly what Bates dropped on my church to ease his conscience. You can't blackmail somebody who has nothing to protect. Well, she does now. What? Her marriage, your career. Stella Dallas, backstage murderess, huh? Now, that's old-fashioned thinking, Father. Well, maybe that comes with your collar. Come in, please. Then you don't think Miss Hart was trying to protect you? What's the point of this? Glad you don't think she's guilty. Why the projector? If that's the film named in the title on the container, I think it should be destroyed here and now. I'll go along with that. But we can see enough of it just to make sure it's the right one. Well, anything you find in this place should be burned anyway. Well, we should see enough to make certain we're not destroying the wrong film.
That's the right one. You can turn it off now. Might be a good idea to see enough to confirm Miss Hart's presence in the zone. That's not necessary. I'm amazed that a priest would even look at such filth. I saw worse than that when I was on the police force. I gather, then, that you know how bad this is. Did you run it? That film answers all of the questions. Why an ambitious candidate decides to marry an ex-actress with a background that could threaten his career. And why he becomes engaged immediately after Miller is killed. I'll hear the rest of your fantasy before I say my piece. Bates was killed because he developed a conscience and might talk about the money. Miller because he could guess who the killer had to be. Two of the three people that were a danger. The third, Marion, would keep quiet if she were married. To her former leading man. Her co-star in this movie. I finally began to wonder why nobody mentioned the male lead in it. I was young. I made a mistake. She made this film for money. Why did you do it? Would you believe her kicks? I'm hoping you'd bring this along. Same kind that killed Miller. Check it out. And look through his infamous rifle collection for the one that killed Bates. I have to advise you of your rights, Mr. Scott. I know my rights. My lawyer, please. You'll get him. Father? What's that? Thirteen thousand ninety-four dollars. I wish I could believe it was a well-meant gift. Tori, it's not evidence. What can I do with it? Contribute it to the church? You got it. A well-meant gift. Now, as long as we're here, how about running that thing? You mean it? Sure. I didn't know you liked this kind of stuff. Oh, I'm a big fan. You really want to see it? Why not? Okay. Splicing them on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 